The season five roadmap just released, revealing all the new zombies content we're gonna be getting in the middle of next season, including the final story mission for Modern Warfare Zombies in three brand new schematics. So let's talk about it while we finish up the final week of challenges for this season and unlock our camo. Now, it is a little bit sad that the story for Modern Warfare Zombies is coming to an end, but the thing I really care about is the new schematics that we're getting, because they actually look pretty decent, unlike the last set of schematics that we got. Because the dead wire detonators were pretty good, but I don't ever see anybody using the sergeant beret or the blood burner key really but this next season schematics are actually pretty decent for one the one i'm most excited about is the stash upgrade it looks like we're getting an upgrade up to 30 but it is a schematic that you're gonna have to get from the new dark aether if we unlock it the same way we unlocked every other schematic so you're gonna have to find it once you unlock the new dark aether and exfil with the actual schematic for it but then your stash will increase to 30 from 20 which i still feel like is a little low but i'll take any increase at this point but we're also getting a disciple bottle which will spawn in a friendly disciple and i'm going to assume that it's going to be similar to how the dog bone is where you can spawn in your own hellhound and have it follow you around maybe revive you and maybe even power you up like we've seen disciples do to elites in the past now i'm just theorizing here this hasn't been confirmed but i'm thinking this could buff you similar to how you can get buffed with a vr11 if a teammate shoots you with it but i'm curious to see how it's actually going to work and if it's just going to be a clone of the hellhound or the sergeant's beret and for our third and final schematic we're getting a grenade bandolier which I don't know what a bandolier is. Looks like a belt to me. But the description on it says that you will be able to replenish your lethals and tacticals over time. Kind of like how using like resupply and multiplayer works. Which I think is a good idea. Maybe it should have just been like a passive upgrade. Kind of similar to like a super Easter egg if you were to complete all the story missions. I think that would have been a bit better it is going to take up a slot in your backpack while you're trying to infill but ultimately it would be nice to be able to replenish my decoys or you know gas grenades if i'm using dead wire detonators it'll be very useful the only thing that kind of sucks about it is that if you're bringing in an aether blade it already is infinite so you're not really going to be replenishing that or maybe it'll replenish faster so i think this is mostly just going to be used for tacticals which you know i guess i'm fine with there could have been a lot more useless things they, they could have added in. And of course, we are getting the final chapter of the story for Modern Warfare Zombies. And in the description for it, it says that we're aiming to sever the tie between the Entity and Dr. Jensen. So I'm assuming the final boss fight for this is going to be us against the Entity. And hopefully it'll reveal to us who the Entity is. If not, it will we'll probably figure it out in BO6 since this game takes place after BO6. So I don't think there's going to be anything crazy story-wise to happen, except for maybe, and this is going to be my prediction, that Rabinoff dies. Because in previous story missions, they've already kind of talked about how he's like way too fit for his age and way too handsome and cute and hot. And that how he's somehow intertwined with the Ethereum. And I think maybe taking out the Entity might take him out too. Or he could possibly die in the fight with the Entity. I don't know. I just, I, I don't think things are looking too good for our boy Rabinov. But the cool part about this is that in the preview images that I saw, it looks like the fight's going to be taking place right down here in the downtown of the city. You can see on the blog that it's like a skyscraper in the dark aether setting with stuff floating around. It looks pretty cool. So hopefully it's a fun story mission. Hopefully it's got some good like lore implications or at least something that's uh you know fun to witness and i hope that the actual story mission of it is like a good amount of challenging and fun because the last aether section that we got going into free dr jensen from whatever was i don't even remember what happened in it basically but when you go into the newest dark aether and you fight the disciple at the end, it would just felt like a very easy boss fight. So I hope there's a bit more of a challenge to it because they've been giving us more of a challenge with the unstable rift. And with the newest Dark Aether's Elder Sigil and the, the secret boss fight at the end of that was a bit more of a challenge. So hopefully they ramp it up a little bit because the story missions have been pretty easy to do. We're also getting four new weapons in the next season and a lot of them look pretty fun to use. The first one is a new SMG, the Static HV, which it's described as a mini LMG. And it looks kind of similar to like the X13 Auto smg barrel attachment and if the track record of new smgs is anything to go off like the fjx horse that i'm using now and the superior 46 hopefully it'll be a pretty decent weapon we're also getting the stg assault rifle looks like a more modern version of the stg 44 which honestly i'm completely fine with a lot of the like world war ii era weapons i'm not the biggest fan of i i think that era in Call of Duty's little played out. But the SUG feels like it would fit right into this game, and I hope it's a really strong weapon. But the weapon I'm most excited about is the spear. We're actually getting like a throwing javelin, not the rocket launcher, but a, a spear that you can actually chuck. And that's the one I really, really want to see how it works in zombies after it's pack-a-punch. I, I hope it has some sort of cool pack-a-punch ability where you could just toss them like extremely fast, or it has a fast melee or something, because 
from the looks of it in the season five trailer, you can throw it. And I'm almost positive you can melee with it as well. And the melee weapons and zombies have been pretty glass cannon type weapons where you can go up and do a lot of damage, but you're probably going to take a lot of damage using it. So actually having a ranged melee weapon like that, I really want to see what kind of damage it has from throwing versus actually like hitting with it. And if we had a limited amount of them, I'm thinking since it, it would be a primary weapon that you will infill with or that you just bring into multiplayer, that it takes up a weapon slot that it has to be infinite. Like you're not just going to throw your spear and lose it because from the trailer, it looked like they're throwing multiple. Like once you throw one, you get another one back immediately. Actually, now that I'm looking at the blog a bit more, it says the throwing spears can be retrieved. So it looks like you might just start out with a few. Like right now I have three throwing knives on my lethal. So I'm assuming it'll probably be around just three spears that you have, but maybe pack-a-punching it and zombies will make it infinite. I don't know. I got a lot of questions for this spear and I can't wait to use it. But we're going to have to wait a little bit to see the spear. It looks like it's not going to be available until season five reloaded. So when we're going to be getting all the new zombies content. But along with the spear at season five reloaded, we're also getting the Torque 35 bow. This looks like more of a compact bow, like an actual bow and arrow. And I'm pretty sure it's classified as a launcher, which is weird because every other bow that we've seen in the game like the crossbow has been listed as a marksman rifle but just like the spear it looks like it's going to have retrievable arrows it says it's going to have 20 of them so we're not going to have infinite ammo on it or anything but hopefully it should be pretty easy to go and pick up all those arrows if you're using them in multiplayer and again like in zombies i hope that it somehow has some like infinite ammo thing when pack a punch or at least a really good amount of them because it would suck to be trying to fight something at a distance and then completely running out of arrows on the way. But at least we'll be able to mess around with it a bit, you know, put our Daryl Dixon on, even if it is a different type of bow and go and retrieve our arrows from all the zombies that we kill. And I've been thinking for a little bit that attachments like the Jack BFB or any like loud weapon in the game attracts more zombies and you get hounded more. So I'm wondering if the stealthier option with the bow would make it so zombies aren't like coming at you as fast as they normally would if you're using a gun. But just like the crossbow from MW2, it looks like we're gonna be able to get different tipped bolts for our torque bow. So we're gonna have the thermite, explosive, and gas tips for it. And I'm hoping that it's gonna be as good as the marksman rifle bow with the explosive tips, because that just might be the best weapon in zombies right now. But since the arrows are retrievable, I am a little concerned on how that's gonna work. Because if you have the explosive tips, obviously you're not going to be able to pick them back up after they explode or use the thermite or use the gas. So you're going to be running the ammo cache quite a bit in zombies. I really hope there's some solution with Pack-A-Punch for it. But either way, I'm really excited to use that and the spirit. It seems like a really fun combo of weapons. It's, you can almost come into here and play primally. And with the new season, we're going to be getting some new aftermarket parts with the first one being the Jack Wide Mouth Barrel for the Morse Sniper Rifle. And it says the Wide Mouth Barrel is, is crafted to accommodate magnetic ball bearings that shatter upon firing, creating a barrage of small lethal projectiles. So it sounds like from this description and the leaks that we've gotten earlier about this aftermarket part that this is kind of going to be like the blunderbuss. And the Morse has already been pretty strong in zombies. It has that special pack-a-punch ability where every time you fire it, it shoots out explosive rounds, kind of similar to the Mustang and Sally's. So it'll be cool to see if it keeps that pack-a-punch ability with this aftermarket part. And we're also getting a new underbarrel attachment, the Jack Slash, which is going to be compatible with, I'm pretty sure, all the same weapons that are compatible with with the Jack Purifier and the Limb Ripper. But this one just kind of looks like a bayonet. And I don't mean it physically looks like a bayonet. Oh, we completed one of our events. Let's go. But in the picture for it, it just looks like a vertical grip. And the description for it says, the underbarrel vertical grip doubles as a combat knife, replacing your melee attack with a lethal slash. And if it follows the trend of all the other underbarrel aftermarket parts and zombies, it's probably going to be pretty busted. Having a nice melee attachment on your weapon, similar to the chainsaw that you can just swing around. Hopefully it'll one shot kill and it'll be a nice option to use when you run out of ammo, but I don't know if it's going to dethrone the chainsaw considering you just sit there and rev it and zombies will walk into it and die. But I guess we'll see. It could have some niche uses, especially if you combine it with one of the muzzle attachments that ups melee damage. We're also getting the Jack Protein Kit for the RAL MG, which is the loudest LMG in the game, I'm pretty sure. So I don't know if it's going to do anything to the audio on it, but the description for it says, This conversion kit turns the RAL into a highly adaptable prototype weapon with a telescoping barrel that can be toggled between full auto and semi-auto fire, offering suppressive fire and precision in the same weapon. So not quite sure what that means for our RAL, but hopefully it's a decent weapon. And the RAL isn't alone in the LMGs getting aftermarket parts because it looks like we're getting one for the RPK called the Jack Cataclysm, which is going to convert its ammo type into 50 caliber rounds, which sounds really good right off the bat, like a 50 caliber bullet, big as hell. 
Sounds like it would do a lot of damage, but what we've seen with the M4 Jack Harbinger kit, where it was kind of disappointing. Like it does decent damage, but it had a really slow fire rate. But for this one, it also says that it has a slow yet powerful high capacity drum mag. This kit is your enemy's nightmare. That, that's what they say, not me. I have no idea how this is going to work. But maybe when it's pack-a-punched, it'll fire a bit faster and maybe do a bit more damage. But we're going to have to wait and see on that one with basically all these, but I, I'm just here to speculate. And they've confirmed what the leaks have put out there that for the Reclaimer 18 shotgun, the Spaz 12, looks like we're getting the Jack Reclaimers, which is going to be the Akimbo kit for that shotgun, which I really hope is not similar to the Jack Wardens, at least in zombies, because the Jack Wardens are really not the greatest. I want to have a fun akimbo shotgun to just tear through hordes of zombies with. And for the description of it, it says they're like a mini artillery barrage. So I don't know if that's hitting at some sort of pack-a-punch ability. I doubt it. I don't think any aftermarket part has gotten its own special pack a punch ability yet but would be cool if it made it explosive a man can dream but i'm also scared that they might learn from the jack wardens in multiplayer and not make them very good at all because reclaimer 18 is already pretty like inconsistent in multiplayer like sometimes you're one shot killing people other times you're getting hit markers like it, it it's not the best shotgun ever pretty decent in zombies though when you throw slugs on so hopefully we'll still be able to add slugs once we use that aftermarket part because a lot of the recent aftermarket parts have kind of been removing attachments or your ability to use certain attachments once you have the aftermarket part on and if that's the case then these are going to be terrible without slugs and the final aftermarket part that they talk about here in the blog is for the bell 27 it's called the jack death march and the description for it says that this aftermarket part replaces standard ammo with high voltage power cells and a barrel with a photonic scatter. Fire a spread of lethal laser blasts that take down your enemies at short range. But this isn't the first time we've seen some sort of photonic laser in the game. The Morse has one. I think it was bugged in zombies when it was first released. I don't think I've tried it since. So I don't know how good it'll be, but it does sound like it'll only really work at close range. At least it's not going to be like another storm ender where it'll basically only kill in tier one and tier two if it's like fully packed and legendary. It's not like this thing is actually designed to maybe do a bit of damage. But overall, besides having to wait until season five reloaded, like we have been for every zombies update, I'm pretty excited for all the new schematics that being added in. A lot of the new weapons and the aftermarket parts look pretty fun. And I hope when it comes to BO6 that they really take a, a, a tip from Sledgehammer here, take a little trick out of their, their toolbox, whatever the saying is. And they continue with the aftermarket parts because it's been a lot of fun to get a new one basically every single week and go in and change up how you've been using weapons and maybe make some weapons that have not been so great in the past a little bit better or just completely reinvent how a weapon works. I just think it's such a fun and cool idea. And I think it'd be pretty stupid for COD to come up with something like this and then just kind of ditch it because they're cooking with this because this is one of the best ideas COD has had in a long time. And it's not like they haven't done anything like this in the past. Like we saw in Monomer for 2019 where one of the LMGs got like a chainsaw attachment or not actually a chainsaw, but like a chainsaw grip to it, kind of turning the LMG into a death machine. And then in MW2, we saw the X13 auto get that SMG type barrel. And now they just went all out with it in this game, throwing on whatever kind of attachments whatever kind of kit that completely changes the weapon. And I don't want to see that die with this game. And we also get a little look at what the new weekly challenge camo is going to be for next season. It's going to be more than eight weeks away at this point. But looking at it, it kind of looks like a more detailed ranked camo. I'm not going to lie. I don't know how much I like it. It's not as uh, like vibrant and out there as we've seen some of the other weekly challenge camos be. But I don't think it's bad. I, I think it's a, a pretty decent looking camo. I guess we'll, we'll see once we can get it into our hands. And speaking of camos, we're getting a new prestige camo with the next season. And it's going to be called Mercury. It's going to be another animated camo. And it looks pretty decent. From the image that they show, they don't show it being animated. But it looks like it's going to be cycling through a bunch of different like looks of the camo. Like some parts are going to be a little bit more vibrant, a little more colorful. And it's going to have a few different colorways on it. It kind of reminds me almost of like the Doppler camos or the Doppler skins from Counter-Strike, if you guys are familiar with those. But it's going to be a bit of a grind to get it because you're going to have to get the one trick camo. You're going to have to get Obsidian and then you can start grinding towards XP to get that. But honestly, it looks pretty worth it to unlock for some of your more used guns. It's a, it's a pretty good looking camo. And we're getting some more collab bundles. One coming out for the WWE that looks pretty decent as well as like a new mode for multiplayer where you can only down enemies and then you have to use a finishing move on them while they're down, which seems like it could be fun. Oh, and we got our Hectal Reverb camo. Let's go. Damn, that took forever to get. 
We had to get 500 triple kills with this FJX. That was a struggle. There's only two minutes left till the Aether Storm gets here. I've been doing this outlast basically the entire game. Actually, did we even get the triple kills done? We might have done a different challenge. Yeah, we didn't even get it done. We're only at 444 triple kills. Whatever, I'm still committed to getting it done. If we don't get it here, we'll get it at final X fill. Did I get anything good for doing one contract the whole game? Nope. But that's basically it for all the zombies related content we're getting next season. Obviously, multiplayer is going to be pretty stacked with the content per usual. With some new maps, new modes. And even Warzone is getting a new POI, which is going to be the Superstore. I don't know where that's going to be located, but it is going to be here in Urzikstan, which is cool to see because that was one of my favorite drop locations back on Verdansk. Maybe they're testing the waters to see, you know, just how popular some things from Verdansk were before they actually go ahead and get Verdansk into BO6, or at least BO6 version of Warzone. But from everything that I've seen on the roadmap so far, it looks like it's going to be a pretty fun season. Gonna be hard to wait for the new zombies content and the weapons at mid-season, but the aftermarket parts should be able to hold me over. Ooh, actually, you see how the disciples spawning in zombies here? I wonder if the new disciple, the friendly one, will be able to do that as well. You can have a little army of zombies. That'd be cool. But I don't think they'd be that nice to us. They'd be kind of busted. Uh-oh. I don't know if we're gonna be able to get these final triple kills to reach the 500 for the game. How many are we at? Oh, wait, we just need 10 more. This is doable. We got two minutes. There it is. 500 triple kills. That's ridiculous. What a crazy challenge. And really quick, let's just go through the stuff we unlocked in that last game. Here is the week eight blueprint for the FJX Horus. Honestly, eh, not the greatest kind of lackluster, but it does come with that aftermarket part sight on it. So that's pretty cool. But this is our week eight camo. This actually looks pretty good. Not bad. Very uh, Matrix-esque. Does it glow in the dark? Oh, you know Sledgehammer loves their camos that glow in the dark. That's not bad looking at all. And it looks like our blueprint glows a little bit as well. They just love adding this effect in. And we also have this camo from our DNA event, which is very nice, very vibrant colors. Looks like it would glow perfectly under a black light. Actually, that's exactly what they're looking for, isn't it? Hold on. Ooh, this looks so nice in the dark. That's beautiful. It's a laser tag ass gun. But it looks sick. And this is it on the P90. So you can see a little bit more of the texture on the camo. That's not bad at all. I really like this camo a lot. That's super nice. But that's all I got for you guys today. Thank you for watching. I truly appreciate all your love and support. And I will see you in the next one. Later.